Okay, I said I was going to do the next video as OBS plugins. I was completely wrong. Due to what happened to me recently, it made me realize there's a video I should probably tell you before we dive really far into making things happen in OBS Studio. Sometimes having to uninstall plugins and things like that is not fun. Or maybe because OBS decides to crash and you lose everything, which happened kind of to me. But thank God I had backups and there's an easy way to do it with OBS Studio called Portable Mode. Let's get gooder at things, yeah! So what's Portable Mode? You, you might be asking, I don't know. OBS Portable Mode is a way that will consolidate OBS's ability to store everything in a single area rather than spreading it all across your PC that it currently does. If you're not familiar with this, trust me, it's a lifesaver. What this is going to allow you to do is to set up backups. Yes, you will be able to back up your entire OBS, save it, and then if it crashes, you can come back to it. So simply in your OBS Studios folder, wherever you put it, for me, I put it in B, but most generally everybody's gonna put it in their C drive. I, I don't store it on my main drive. That's just me. What you're gonna do is you're gonna create a text file that says this, OBS portable mode TXT. Yes, it's just a simple text file. To make a new one, you just gotta go down to your Windows accessories, find the notepad. So once you have made your text file, that says OBS underscore portable underscore mode dot TXT. That's literally all you need. You, you don't need to put anything else in here. Add a recipe if you want. I don't care. When you go into your OBS studio folder, you just drag it into that first spot and that's going to put it into portable mode. When you first load up OBS studio after you've done portable mode, you're going to see that it's looks brand new and everything looks like it's gone. Trust me, it's not gone. There's a very specific place you just need to go to to copy and move those files over. Once you've loaded OBS Studio for the first time, you're gonna notice this config file has been formed. So this is where everything's gonna get stored, your scenes, your settings, everything that was stored somewhere else. So when you go into config and then to the OBS Studio, these are the folders that you're gonna need to copy from another location. Before we go into showing you where we can get all these different folders that you need, you're gonna need to enable showing your hidden folders. This is gonna be vitally important and you'll see why in a little bit. So let's show you how to find those hidden folders. To easily make sure you can find hidden folders, just type in the search bar. Just type in hidden folders, you'll click that show hidden folders. It's gonna pop up this window. Scroll down to where it's gonna say change settings to show hidden and system files. Once you open it, you'll go down to where it says hidden files and folders. Just click show hidden files and folders and drives, hit apply and you're good. Okay, now you can see your hidden folders. Let's move on. You're gonna wanna go into your C drive, users, your username. Make sure that you have hidden folders appearing because this is a hidden folder. App data, roaming, roll down to OBS Studio, and this is everything you need to copy. Highlight and copy, and then you come in here and you paste. And then everything is gonna come back and be just as it is. It may take it a few minutes to load, but it should all come back very seamlessly. And voila, now you have a completely portable OBS. You can actually move it anywhere you want on your PC, or you could actually copy it and put it into another PC. You actually can just move this from place to place. That's the beauty of portable mode, but it goes a step beyond that. The fact that you can zip it all and save it, archive it somewhere is absolutely fantastic, especially when you're tampering with stuff like I do all the time. There's a lot of times I wind up with plugins that I'm like, ooh, that sounds really cool. I wanna give it a go, let's try it. And it fails. I, I try a lot of different plugins. I try a bunch of different things. Sometimes things will work, sometimes they won't. The hard part is actually uninstalling them because most generally, a lot of them are hard to uninstall. I'm looking at you stream elements, your, your SE Live. It caused me so many problems lately. It made me very, very sad. You're gonna cry? You're gonna cry? You're gonna cry? No! Sometimes the plugins aren't up to date and sometimes they just crash your OBS and you're kind of SOL. It happens. So doing backups and having a complete save state of everything before you installed a new plugin is going to save you so much time if one is an absolute just nightmare garbage plugin. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how to zip this up and archive it, or at least how I'm doing it. So all I'm gonna do is go into my where I have OBS saved right here, and 
I'm going to do 7-zip. All right, we're going to add to archive. I'm just going to put today's date into here and let it compress and zip. And because of my stupidity on how I did this, it actually did a folder of 10, a folder of 18, and called it 22 because I didn't think that through. But nevertheless, it's there. I'm just going to rename this. There, that looks a little better. I'm going to go ahead and move this into another folder. <laughs> so let's add a new folder, and we're going to call this OBS Backups. And I'm just going to make sure that that file is in my OBS backups where I wanted it to be. So now I have the which date that was as a backup and it's good to go. If you ever need to come back to it, you actually just need to extract it to where you want it to go and you're it's done. Now you can move OBS Studio anywhere you want. You can put it on a different part of your PC, add it to a completely different computer. Now you can have a computer that can run OBS too if you need it to. Anytime you now install a plugin, and you have that backup before you install that plugin, you can test out that plugin, make sure that it's going to work for you and not crash your system. If it does, well, then pull out your backup and you don't have to worry anymore. Just replace everything that's there and you're good to go. Now, if you really wanna get interesting with things, there's another thing you can add to make sure that this stays as a unified package. If you add a new folder and you call it your assets folder, now you can start adding all the overlays and every media source that you need to make your stream the way it is and put it all in one folder. This way it will all come with you as you save and back up everything. When you set up an assets folder like this, you're gonna need to go into OBS and it's going to show you all the files that are missing. And that's because you're going to need to make sure you reset all your media sources to everything being directed to that assets folder that's now in your OBS Studio folder. Now it's going to look into that assets folder where you loaded it and you're off to go. You don't have to worry about having to reset those things up or worry about having to pull from multiple different folders for all your media sources. Now that's all in one spot, making your life way easier when you need to do backups or when you need to move this onto a new PC. There's nothing difficult about it. It's just a matter of knowing where the stuff is, where to put it after you've done portable mode, and then just backing it up so that way you're safe, secure, ready to go in case the worst should happen. And trust me, the worst will happen at some point. It just happened to me a few days ago. That's all I got for you today. I promise I'm gonna get around to the plugins one, but I needed to cover this topic today. If you liked what you saw, give a like down there. If you wanna see more of this content as I keep putting it out, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. Let me know if this was useful, if there was things that need clarification, if I need to redo this video, if I suck, let me know how to improve stuff to make your life a little bit easier when you're dealing with OBS Studio. With that, I'm taking off. I got work to do. I still got to transfer some stuff over from my failed OBS to my new OBS because I didn't do everything correctly. It happens. I'll catch you guys later. Happy streaming.